morning, folks. Welcome to the Sunday Politics. Nick Clegg says Chris Renard must apologize. What course are his friends? With our senior Lib Dem minister, Danny Alexander, whose side he's on. <clears throat> what about the voters? What do they make of the Lib Dems? We hear the views of his Sunday Politics focus group. I don't care. They do other people's work. It's Paddy Morton, MP! And we'll get the verdict of Portsmouth MP Kenny Morton's plunge from the high board. From who else? The Minister for Portsmouth. And in the southeast, we have the highest number of deaths from one asbestos-related cancer. So does a new law which gives compensation to sufferers of mesothelioma go far enough? <laughs> And with me, as always, the best and the brightest political panel in the business. They pay me to see this every week. Nick Watt, Helen Lewis, Jan Ganesh, they'll be tweeting with poise and panache. For a year than road traffic accidents, and the southeast has the highest number of incidents in the country. Mesothelioma is a type of cancer caused by exposure to asbestos. For many sufferers, claiming compensation has been difficult, but a new law is about to make it easier. But does it go far enough? Our reporter, Sarah Neville, went to speak to sufferers and campaigners find out why they say the bill is a missed opportunity. I started in 1953 as a shipwright apprentice at 15. Ray Nye from Sea Salter in Kent worked at Chatham Dockyard, in heavy industry like thousands of people in the southeast, where use of asbestos was widespread. He married his childhood sweetheart, Mavis, but 60 years on, Mavis has mesothelioma, an aggressive form of lung cancer caused by breathing in asbestos fibres whilst washing her husband's work clothes. I've said ever since that diagnosis I, that it's me, it's my fault, that I give it to her because I brought it home on my clothes. Uh, we've discussed this at length um, because I, well, I still feel guilty. But I don't think you should be guilty. The government in that time should feel guilty. <laughs> Nearby in Sheppey, Italian Roberto Zambada was a shipbreaker. He died from mesothelioma two years ago after working with asbestos for some 30 years. I've been on my own and I've, and I've just sobbed and, you know, because I knew there was nothing I can do. They never put themselves in that situation to develop this horrible disease. Um, people know, in the know, know and chose not to do anything about it. So people should be held accountable. The southeast has one of the highest rates of mesothelioma in the world. It's incurable, usually kills within months of diagnosis, and has ten times less funding for research than some other cancers. It can take decades for mesothelioma to develop, which makes claiming compensation difficult because many of the firms where asbestos was used no longer exist. Historically, for those who could trace their company or their company's insurers, Damages of up to £200,000 could be claimed in civil actions. But for those that couldn't, there was no hope of any significant payout. Until now. The government's introducing a new £350 million compensation scheme, worth an average of £115,000 per person as part of the mesothelioma bill. It's a positive step, but... The deal is capped at 75% of the average amount of compensation that sufferers would have received in a civil case. And there's a cut-off point for eligibility. Anyone diagnosed before July 2012 can't claim. And there's no extra cash for research. So all in all, is this a good deal for sufferers? I think that the insurance industry uh, negotiated hard with the government. ordinarily get if they'd gone for a civil process. I tried to get that raised to 80%. I think that would have meant a better deal for victims of mesothelioma, and it would have not cost the insurance industry a great deal of amount of money more. So I think it's a bit of a shame that the government didn't right. push a little bit harder. Mavis Nye, who now campaigns on the issue, feels let down. There's a lot going on in, in USA and Australia, but not us. Not to the extent of, that they are. They're really sort of plunging the money into it all and we just need some money for research. I feel um, 
that if anybody was to unintentionally take somebody's life, they're had up for manslaughter, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And yet, this has been taking so many people's lives. And what have they given? A handout. So, you know, it's not as much as money, it's as much as having justice for those that are going to die with it. The bill comes into effect later this year, but campaigners say that doesn't mean the fight is over. I wanted to make it a better bill. We had cross-party consensus to do that. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but I think that we will continue as a cross-party group to make sure that we do get better justice for victims of mesothelioma and we do get more money into research. Use of asbestos was banned in 1999, but some industrial workers are now paying the ultimate price. And the question remains, have government efforts to give justice to victims been a missed opportunity? Reporting where we were hoping to talk to the minister who's overseen this legislation, Mike Penning, but he couldn't join us. We're going to cross to Chatham and talk to Mark Reckless, the Rochester MP. And uh, Mr. Reckless, like Tracy Crouch, you wanted this bill to go further. So do you think it was a missed opportunity? Well, I, th I think it's a good bill, and I think the government have taken this opportunity. I I'm really proud of what Tracy's been doing to, to make it a better bill still, and I'm, I'm sorry she didn't succeed in, in getting it up to 80%. But um, we voted for, for more research and the insurance industry to support that. And I, I just wish we could have gone a little further. But yeah, I, I do, I do you, think it's What good. do you think was happening here? I mean, do you think the government blinked too soon in the face of opposition from the insurance company? Well, I think the government negotiated with the insurers and they then tried to present that to, as a done deal to Parliament. And I think actually we could have uh, pushed the insurance industry a little further, as Tracy was uh, trying to do. And I feel particularly sorry for largely women like Mavis, if they were sort of washing their husband's overalls or something like that and uh, were exposed that way. I, I think it's really sad when we, we don't have compensation for people in that scenario, but we have Chatham Dockyard here in the Medway Towns, and at least this bill is going to make something, some things better and get three quarters at least compensation for people who wouldn't otherwise have got it. So and that's something I welcome. And returning to that deal with the insurance industry, Labour has accused the government of uh, having a vested interest. That he says that the industry has bankrolled the Conservative Party for years. Is that what's going on here, do you think? Well, I don't, I don't think that is fair, actually. I think the insurance uh, industry is putting a lot of money into this. I mean, even paying a three, three quarters compensation rather than the 80% uh, Tracy was pushing for is going to be a lot of money. I, I wish we'd gone a, a, a little further. But it's been good to work um, you know, with people from different parties and to support Tracy on this. It's been a, a good campaign and I think something that's uh, re really deserved for people who've suffered from this terrible disease, particularly who, who works or have been associated with Chatham Dockyard in, in our area in the Medway Towns. I'm going to say another criticism of this, Bill, is that there's this cut-off point of July 2012. Anyone diagnosed before then, and many of your constituents must be in this situation, won't, won't get anything at all. That seems ever so cruel. Yeah, I mean, people who can be clear where the employer was, and I think for, for, for the dockyard that is, that, is, that is clear, they should be able to get compensation. The issue is where people haven't been able to put on a particular employer, or where the employer's gone out of business, or their insurance company's gone out of business, and that's what we're trying to deal with here. here. And there are a lot, a lot of people who will be helped because of this bill who wouldn't uh, otherwise would have been. I, I wish we, we, we'd been able to go a, a bit further, but I still think it's a, a good policy which will help, help a lot of people. And where do we go from here? We've heard about the issue of funding, that there isn't much research done into this horrible disease, and that as a result of this deal the government's done, there won't be any funding for research coming from the insurance companies. What do we do next? Well, we won't be uh, forcing that in this legislation because we didn't win that, that, that vote uh, that we, Tracy and I supported for the increased research. But I hope the insurance uh, industry will, will listen to the strength of support and feeling on this and perhaps on a voluntary basis look if they could perhaps support uh, rather more research into this terrible illness because I think they'll get goodwill from that and I think it, we really should recognise the work Tracy Crouch and others have done to push for it for the victims who clearly deserve that support and understanding. Okay Mark Reckless thank you very much indeed for joining us. Clarence Mitchell do you think the government should have pushed for money for funding or uh, was that about as good a deal as we could have expected? We, we, 
with something as awful as this, um, we should never be satisfied um, if it's not the, the full uh, compensation that, that is due to somebody who has suffered, as you say, from this awful disease. I mean, in Brighton alone, we, we had 23 registered deaths from it uh, between 2011 and 12. Those deaths are going to rise. So it, 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 exactly, because statistics. this is the so-called long-tail disease. Yeah. The effects of it only come out in later life, and sadly, many people who get it don't have much so The government prognosis. should have gone further, fought harder with the insurance companies to maybe get that funding, find out how, what causes it. Tracy's campaign, as, as Mark Ratliff just said, was fantastic. Um, it has yielded great results, but the insurance companies now, the onus is on them to, to be sympathetic and to understand the way that uh, the bill is moving and the way that public opinion is moving. They really should help people. If there is a demonstrable case where compensation is due, frankly, they should get 100%. Is it realistic to expect the insurance companies to make a voluntary contribution? Because they would argue, Jasper, that this isn't their, their problem, that they're having to pick up the pieces for irresponsible insurers and companies that have, that have long since ceased to exist. I think the government have done very well to get where we have, to get 75% back. It's considerably more than the Labour government managed after all. Um, but yes, like everybody else, it would have been good if we could have gone that bit further, I think particularly for people who don't make the, make the cut-off. Uh, it reminds me to some extent of uh, all those uh, soldiers, servicemen in the 1950s who were subjected to, uh, to nuclear radiation. And I think that lots of pretty terrible things went on in those days that were, people were completely innocent of. And I found that very moving, that mm. footage of that poor lady who, who you know, just instantly washing her husband's, husband's work clothes and is now, is now very the seriously The trouble is, as, as uh, the Minister Mike Penning is, is on record as saying, he had to be pragmatic. He wanted to get this legislation through quick. And by the way, it was the Labour government that actually started the process, yes. which, which has concluded to be yeah. fair to the party. It, it, the difficulties of being in government, however heartbreaking the story is, is you have to make pragmatic decisions, don't you? And I think, well, I think that's really what the government have, have done. Yes, I think all of us would like it to go a bit further, but without actually personally being in on the negotiations, it's always a very fine judgment as to know whether you could have pushed it that little bit further. I mean, I think we're probably both in agreement that in an yeah. ideal world, of course, we would have liked, would have liked more, but it's at least it's a good start. And Clarence, you've worked both sides of the fence of the civil service and also as a journalist. Do you think, actually, being realistic, this is about as good as you could expect it to be, or should we be going further? At the moment, in the present climate, and given the, the arguments on both sides, I'm sure it is as good as it could be for the moment, but we should never be satisfied. Surely those of us that are in politics and wanting to get into politics um, are, are there to make a difference, and um, we should always be idealistic. But you are, once in government, bound by the realities of the situation. But politics is, is all about making decisions, and hard decisions at times, but surely we should keep pushing for something that's as clear-cut as this, where, where people are literally dying because of the problem. And still a lot of asbestos in schools as well. Yeah, this is well, the other that's, that's, that's the issue. This could be a, a time bomb. Yes, this, this, will, this will come back yeah, as, as, a, as a major debate at different points. Okay, thank you both for now. We're going to move on because the government has said it will go all out for shale gas.